Hey guys, welcome back to Brown's Math Club. Today we'll be learning how to convert decimals into fractions. So let's say that we have the decimal number 0 0.27. We have to turn this decimal into a fraction. So we need a numerator and a denominator. Now there's various ways that we can convert this decimal into a fraction. First I'll show you the more, I guess, it takes us a lengthy word method in order to convert this decimal into a fraction, but I guess it's really helpful when you have um, smaller numbers, like as this example, which is 0.27. So we have to apply place value here, and place value is something that I should know from like fourth, fifth grade, okay? So when you have decimals, we know that our first place value is going to be the tenths place value. So that means 2 is in the tenths place, or we can also say this is 2 out of 10. And our 7 is going to be in the hundredths place, and we can also write this as 7 out of 100. So we have these two fractions, right? Now in order to convert this decimal, 0.27, into a fraction, we can add these two fractions together. So we are going to add them together. So if we go ahead and rewrite this over here, 2 tenths plus 7 over 100. We know that when we're adding fractions, we have to have the same denominator. Now in this case, we have 10 and 100. So in order to find a common denominator, we need to find the least common multiple of 10 and 100, which is of course the number 100. So we're going to rewrite the fractions with a denominator of 100. So we know that 7 over 100, is, it already has a denominator of 100, so we don't change the fraction. We keep it as 7 over 100. However, 2 tenths, we do need to change it. So what do we multiply 10 by to get 100? Well, we know that 10 multiplied by 10 is going to give us 100. So 2 multiplied by 10 is going to give us 20. And the reason we multiply 2 by 10 is because whatever you do to the denominator, you must use it to the numerator, right? So it'll become 20 over 100. So we know that 20 over 100 plus 7 over 100 gives us 27 over 100. And this is our fraction. So 0.27, okay, so 0.27 is equal to 27 over 100. Okay, so this was the more lengthy method of turning a decimal into a fraction. Now there's another way we can do this. So let's say that we have, we're gonna keep the same decimal, so we have 0.27. Now imagine, okay, just think to yourself, this is, um, I guess this is the way that I prefer to do it. Think of the decimal point as the number one. So think of it as a number one. So we have one, right? Now all of the digits that come after the decimal point, so to the right side of the decimal point, count them and then count. Let put that many um, zeros by your one, right? So we have two and seven, which is we have two digits, right? So we're gonna add two zeros to our one to make it a hundred. So that means 0.27 can be written as, now this 100 is our denominator, so it can be written as 27 over 100. Now this did not take much time, but you just need to kind of apply some common sense here, I guess. The decimal point is the 1, and then the number of digits afterwards is zeros. So this tells us what our place value technically is going to be, right? Which is going to be 100, because our smallest place value, if you come to think of it, is in the, is the seventh, right? As seven is in the hundredths place. So therefore it will be over 100. So 0 0.27 is 27 over 100. Okay, now let's go ahead and do another example. So let's say that we have the decimal number 1.25. So in this case, we have a whole number and we have the decimals, right? So we have in the tenths place and we have in the hundredths place. So whenever you have a whole number in front of your decimal, we are going to have a mixed number. So that is technically the type of a fraction, right? But it has a whole number beside it. So in this case, our whole number is the number 1. So we're just going to set the number 1 aside for now, okay? And we are going to concentrate on the point 25. So remember, as we said, we can count, we can um, just say that the decimal point stands for the number 1. And the number of digits that come to the right side of the decimal point 
we're going to count them as zeros. So 2 and 5, there are two digits, so we're going to have two zeros. So 100. 100 is going to be our denominator. And so this is how we come up with our denominator. So we don't really necessarily need to go through and say, okay, this is going to be two tenths, this is going to be five hundredths, add them together, find the common denominators, and all of that. So it's a quick and easy way of turning a decimal into a fraction. So now what exactly is going to be our numerator? Well, the numerator is going to be the number that is the number 25, right? So we already know, we've already taken care of the number 1. We have our denominator, so the number that's left really is 25. So our numerator is going to be 25. And this is our fraction or our mixed number, which is 1 and 25 hundredths. Now, it's always a good idea to simplify. So sim when you're simplifying, the whole number stays the same. So it's going to be 1. 25 over hundredths. Well, we know that 25 and 100, both of these are divisible by the number 5. So if we divide them by 5, we will get 25 divided by 5, which is 5 and then 100 divided by 5, which is 20. Now we can simplify this further. So 5 divided by 5, 20 divided by 5, 5 divided by 5 is 1, 20 divided by 5 is 4, and we get 1 fourth. So our 1 and 25 over hundredths can be simplified to 1 and 1 fourth. So this is our simplified fraction form or our mixed number for the decimal number 1.25. So this was another example. So let's go ahead and do another one. So this time, let's say that we have point zero 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 six. Now in this case we have three zeros in front. Now these do not affect how we're going to solve this. So still, so it's 0 0.0006, which I'll be also write this as 0 0.0006. This zero does not matter, okay? So it doesn't matter whether you put it in front of the decimal point or not because it doesn't have any value. So we're going to do this the exact same way. So think of the decimal point as the number one, and the number of digits afterwards are going to be counted as zero. So we have one, two, three, four. We now one, two, three, four zeros, and now we know we don't have a whole number in this case, right? So it's going to be our denominator is going to be 10,000. And our numerator is going to be the number 6. So 0 0.0006 is the same thing as 6 and 10 thousandths. So this is our fraction. All right. Now in this case, we had zeros that were after the decimal point, but then there was a digit afterwards, right? So we had the number 6. What if you have an example that says point zero point zero 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 eight six zero 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 zero? Now this might seem like a humongous number. Well, actually it's not. Because if you take a look at this, we know that we have zeros in front of the 86, right? Now, the reason like zeros really matter is because zero, there are some cases where a zero is a zero. It does not have any value. But if it comes before the numbers, like for example, if in this case we have 86, it comes before them. So it's technically coming in between the decimal point and the other numbers. These zeros actually matter. They will affect the, de the place value of that decimal. However, if they're coming after the number, so in this case we have 86, if they're coming afterwards, all these these five zeros don't really hold a value unless there was let's say there was another digit here so let's say there was three then yes they would hold a value but in this case there isn't a three so they do not hold a value so we can simply cross these out okay so we're gonna cross them out out of the question okay so we're left with 0 0.00086 and now we can again write this as if we go ahead and make this into a fraction the decimal point as a 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going to add 5 zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is the same thing as 100,000. Therefore, this is going to be our denominator. And our numerator is going to be 86. So 0 0.00086 is the same thing as 86 and 100 thousandths. Alright, that's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned how to convert a decimal to a fraction. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye!